In Chapter 3, today we're going to look at elements and compounds and mixtures and pure substances. An element, by definition, is a substance that cannot be broken down into another substance by a chemical method. Examples of this are iron, aluminum, oxygen, hydrogen. Remember that all the matter in the world around us is made up of elements. So if I'm going to refer to an element, what I'm referring to is something that's found on the periodic table. If I put elements together in certain combinations, I've come up with what is called a compound. And a compound, by definition, is a substance composed of a given combination of elements that can be broken down into those elements by chemical methods only. So I can break a compound into its individual elements, but I can only do that through chemical means. Some examples of compounds are water, carbon dioxide, and table sugar. And if you notice, water is hydrogen and oxygen. And if you go back to the periodic table, you can find hydrogen and oxygen. We chemically react them together, and we form the compound water. Carbon dioxide is the same way. Carbon is an element. Oxygen is an element. We put them together in the ratio of one carbon to two oxygen, and we chemically combine them. We have a compound called carbon dioxide. Table sugar is a little bit more of a complicated compound that has a lot more than just two or three elements in it. It has 12 carbon, 22 hydrogen, and 11 oxygen that are chemically bound together. These individual elements in this ratio are combined together chemically to form a compound. A compound always contains atoms of different elements. And it always has the same composition or ratio of atoms. So if I go to Germany, for example, and I ask them what their formula for water is, they're going to say H2O two hydrogen for one oxygen, the same thing for carbon dioxide and table sugar in this case. Notice that um, they're always going to be in those ratios no matter what, and each of these elements within the compound are different. So how many of the following are compounds? Well, if you look at them, all of them are compounds because they're made up of more than one type of element. You can see those there. And these are legitimate. You wouldn't know if I had just thrown some elements together or not. We have water. We have dinitrogen, tetraoxide, sodium hydroxide, manganese, four oxide, and hydrofluoric acid. So these are examples of compounds. Now we're going to look at the difference between mixtures and pure substances. Pure substances, by definition, always have the same composition. They are either made up of elements or of compounds, which are made up of elements. And some examples for you to remember are pure water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and gold. And if you notice that pure water is H2O, and it's the same here as it is anywhere else on the planet, and this composition right here makes up a compound. We have two or more different elements. Carbon dioxide is the same way, two or more different elements. That is a pure substance, and it's a compound. Hydrogen is H2. And that's two hydrogen atoms together. That's a pure substance. It's an element. Gold, AU, is a pure substance, and it's just the element gold by itself. Mixtures, on the other hand, have variable compositions or different compositions depending on where they are. For example, wood, tea, and coffee. If I cut down a tree here and I cut down a tree in Irondale, the, even if they were both oak trees, they wouldn't have the same composition inside the wood. Tea is the same way. If I were to make iced tea at my house and I put a cup of sugar in it, and you make iced tea at your house and put two cups of sugar in the same amount of tea, they're both mixtures of tea, but they have a different composition. And coffee is the same way. We can take these examples of mixtures and we can separate them into pure substances, but we have to do that through a chemical means most times. Let's take a look at homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. So homo is the prefix in science that means the same. So a homogeneous mixture is the same throughout the whole entire mixture. And we call homogeneous mixtures solutions. They have visibly indistinguishable parts when you look at it. You can't tell uh, one thing from the other. So if I'm looking at, let's say, Kool-Aid again. So I look at a, a jug of Kool-Aid that's been mixed up. It's definitely a mixture because it's Kool-Aid, and it could vary depending on where you're at and who made it. However, if you look at it, it looks like the same all the way throughout. And you expect to be able to take a drink of that Kool-Aid, and it tastes the same throughout as well. So visibly indistinguishable parts, and we consider it a solution. 
It does not vary in composition from one region to another. Some examples of homogeneous mixtures that aren't Kool-Aid would be the air around you, brass, and table salt when you stir it into water. Now, the air around you, it's, it's kind of odd to think that air and then brass is a solid, and it, you would consider those um, solutions, but they are considered homogeneous mixtures, which are solutions. The air around you and the air around someone else have, has a little bit different composition, but you notice you can't see the different molecules to distinguish between it, and it should be the same throughout around you. Um, brass, on the other hand, is a solid that is made by melting um, copper and zinc together, making an alloy, and those two metals are melted, and the brass is formed, and once it forms a solid again, the percentage of zinc and copper in different um, types of brass are different, and the reason for that would be um, maybe a, the tone that you would want to hear when you hit it or when you play the sound through it if you're using an instrument and uh, making a bell, that brass sound would be different depending on the copper and the zinc proportions that we put together. So it would be a mixture because not all brass is the same. However, when you look at brass that's been solidified, it looks the same throughout. You can't see uh, the zinc and the copper separately. Table salt stirred in water is the same way. Once you stir it up, you no longer see the salt. Uh, all you see is kind of cloudy looking water and those, um, those ions of Sodium chloride have been evenly distributed throughout that, so no matter where I take a sample of the water, whether at the top of the beaker or toward the bottom, it should all have the same composition. Hetero. Hetero means different. So heterogeneous mixtures have visibly distinguishable parts. They contain regions that have different properties from those of other regions. Here's an example. This is sand stirred into water. So no matter how much I stir this sand up, the sand is not going to dissolve in the water, and you're always going to be able to see the sand separate from the water. Oil and vinegar dressing is another great example. If you take it and you shake it up, it stays suspended. The oil and the vinegar together will stay suspended for just, just seconds and then start to uh, separate out again. Ranch dressing, just regular ranch dressing. You see the flex of different... Um, Spices and things throughout the white dressing itself, that is a heterogeneous mixture. So if you can see the difference within it when you look at the mixture, it's heterogeneous as opposed to homogeneous. Okay, let's take a look at this concept check. The concept check asks which of the following is a homogeneous mixture. So remember that homogeneous means the same throughout. So let's just take a look at each one of these. Pure water. We know that pure water is H2O. It's written as a compound. It's made up of elements, and we know that it's the same no matter where we're at in the world. This is a compound. Gasoline. Gasoline can have different um, chemical makeups because I'm not specific about what type of gasoline I'm talking about. I don't know what the percentage of ethanol is inside the gasoline, so we can have different compositions of this. However, if you look at uh, gasoline, when you pour it out, you can't see the difference between uh, the water molecules as composed to the gasoline molecules as composed to the additives or whatever is in the gasoline itself. So the gasoline is considered a homogeneous mixture, and that's our answer is gasoline. A jar of jelly beans. So you stop and think about a jar of jelly beans. If you have a jar and I have a jar, we both have jars of jelly beans. However, uh, they're not evenly distributed throughout. So what we would see with jelly beans is a heterogeneous mixture. So I'll put a hetero mix. Soil is also a hetero mix. And it's a heterogeneous mixture because whether I dig soil out of my yard and you dig it out of your yard and we look at it together, it doesn't matter that it came from two separate yards. We're not going to see completely uniform uh, substance throughout. It's going to be different um, depending on where the soil came from, from the top down to the bottom the rocks that are in it, the clay amounts that are in it, and so on. Copper metal is Cu, and copper is found on the periodic table. It's an element, so this is a pure substance, and it would be considered an element. The only way to really get good at recognizing the difference between homo and heterogeneous mixtures, between compounds and pure substances, is just to practice, so that's what we're going to do is practice to get better at this.